into supercars paradise for the next 250 kilometres as we look for the light change and Waters gets a nice start. A great hole shot off the line, puts margin into them on the run into turn one. Pain covering as they make their way down to the first chicane. Great job by Randall, who's got it all crossed up and locked up. Mustard has to run wide there as well. Van Gisbergen's dropped back a little and now Randall covers on the inside. We've got Waters, we've got Pain, we've got Randall, Mustard, Van Gisbergen, one to five. And did Van Gisbergen get damaged there? Because he had to run right across those inside curves. And very easy to bend his steering arm or bend the shock absorber when you do that. He had no choice but to smash it over the inside curves at turn one and two. And we saw that stationary shot of Slade parked awkwardly down there. So has he been able to move that car from harm's way? Shadows on the run into turn 11. And we've been advised that Slade is mobile once again. That's great news for the new Lawn Racing supporters. Waters has got some margin. He got a ripping start here as we look at Davison and Winterbottom in combat through the left-hander at 12. It's all tight, twisty, second-gear stuff here. But they know how important it is to try and grab track position early. And here is an opportunity with cold tyres and cold brakes while everybody's finding their balance to be able to achieve some of that. Will Brown's picked up four spots up to 21st straight away. Feeney up a couple of spots up to 19th. But that was a very wild start. The best start that I've seen Cam Waters get for a long while. This is on board now with Will Brown trying to get himself into the inside zone. And this looks like a good run by Matt Payne. Payne almost fired down the inside there. Four Mustangs. Waters, Payne, Randall, Mostert, Van Gisbergen, Reynolds. That's your six. And there is a protocol for what happens when they get to the far chicane at Main Beach there as to who has right of way. Oh, and a big lock up again by Randall. So he had that on the run to turn one. That tyre is finding the flat spot on that braking application, which is very heavy into turn 11. And he's defending in third position there at the moment as Kostecki also just covers from a fast Scott Pye in that retro Hino livery car number 20. Another little spot there for Kostecki. So good news for Brody fans in the Coke Camaro. He's been able to sneak by Scott Pye. That puts him up into seventh. That's three positions immediately. Van Gisbergen set him back there in fifth position. Fastest lap of the race, Boston. Awesome images of the cars with next to no tolerance to the walls here on the Gold Coast. Big pressure here on Waters. Payne has got a hustle going at the moment. And we've got Mostert up a spot now. He's grabbed Thomas Randall, so Mostert up into third position. And still that hefty margin of about two and a half seconds back to Van Gisbergen, who no doubt is also just being cautious with those tyres. It looks like Dave Reynolds is having a go at Van Gisbergen in the background. So nice move by Mostert. Now, is that tyre that you spoke of for Randall just hurting his speed slightly and for Coke and Erebus fans what is important is that margin now between Kostecki and Van Gisbergen so Van Gisbergen in fifth Kostecki in seventh that's the story of the championship this year remember they come into the race 131 points separated with Kostecki leading over Shane and it's about a couple of seconds of margin on the racetrack at the moment between Shane and Brody, fifth and seventh. He's, Payne looks strong. He does. And he's hunting at the moment. He's looking for ways around here. But Waters has also got to play two games. He not only wants to retain that lead and have the choice of where he wants to place the car, he wants to look after the tyres because they'll eventually motion into no man's land there once they get past about lap 10. Nobody's done that sort of running on tyres here this weekend. Waters through the fast chicane. They're all being very cautious through there on these opening laps. This is a passing opportunity up here on the inside at turn 11. And Payne's got a difficult job here when he's tucked that close to the rear wing of the lead car. He's reading part numbers on that thing at the moment. He is so close and he's now got the fastest lap of the race with a 12-2. And I reckon Mostert's looking at it going, Matt Payne looks really energised. And I'm going to just park myself off this a little bit in case there's a bump between those two Mustangs in front. So Mostert, who's just got the best seat in the house of the Payne versus Waters battle. Now 
race control is having a look at Thomas Randall, turn one, lap one for shortcutting as well. So we'll keep an ear out on that one. Century Mattress Chopper gives us an awesome view of the strengths and weaknesses of both these cars in the braking area at the hairpin at turn four. That's the slowest corner on the track. It's about 60 kilometres an hour. And then they start this northbound run, reaching sixth gear, top gear for 240 plus kilometres an hour with a tailwind today into the main beach chicane. And look at the complexity of it. And then into the shadows up here for turn 11, second gear left-hander. The margin across those top four cars at the moment is only 1.2 seconds, and the fourth car in the queue is the one that's under investigation. Watch the start for the car at the front of the field. Waters made a blinder. Was able to put the car exactly where he wanted it. And then Matt Payne had to cover every which way down there. And there was a big lock-up on the outside. And then straight ahead goes Randall. Mostert has to do the same. Van Gisbergen also had to take evasive action, and that's what happened. We saw in the glimpse in the background of what happened to Slade. Here's the view from the rear bumper of Waters. Nice initial jump. It wasn't as big a lockup as I thought for Randall, but it was the right front that got pinched there. And Mostert did the same. Mostert did the same. I was just about to say, they're talking about Randall, but yeah. Mostert did the same. On board here with Shane, Red Bull Ampole Racing entry. There's Thomas Randall. And now Shane, I think from the replay I saw from above with Boston on the right, he had to sort of jump over the top of the curb yeah. as well, and he did. So Chaz has done it as well. And remember, only seconds before the start of the race, I said that's very typical of what will happen here year on year. Meantime, Brody, who was down in 10th position after the Armour All Top 10 shootout, is now up into 7th position. He's made some gains. Lockups are plenty here. That one on the right front for Scott Pye on the blast into turn 11, and that was sufficient for Brody to be able to rock on by. So a few people are going to be carrying some wounds on their tyres here. And there's the move for third position for Chas Mostert. Nice work down into turn four for him. We've already seen a couple of lockups from Thomas Randall. Here it is again from his viewpoint. And a nice dive bomb straight down the inside. Did it with authority. No lockups for Chaz. It looked as though there was no contact there, and here's the view coming out the other side. Now, the team at Penrod Racing are energising Matt Payne to put a move on. A lot of radio chat. Also, I think David Reynolds has made a mistake because from the Century Batteries chopper cam a minute ago, it looked like Reynolds was having a dive at Van Gisberg at turn four. Now there's a little gap there. So I think David's either dropped back off him a little bit or made a little mistake on board now with Reynolds. And as Neil was just explaining, the complexity of that big chicane, 7, 8, 9, 10 are the corner numbers. Down then into turn 11 where the braking performance is ultra critical and there's a quite a big bump, pronounced bump, in the middle of that braking area. 12-2 is a popular number. Cam Waters, best lap, 12-2. Best lap for Matt Payne, 12-2. Best lap for Chaz Mostert, 12-2. But in the fractions, he's the one that's got the edge. He's got the fastest lap thus far. And then Thomas Randall's also done a 12-2. Van Gisbergen's done a 12-3. Reynolds has done a 12-2. So there's a bunch of people out there with very competitive and close cars at the moment. I love that shot. And just as you said it, Cam Waters just done the fastest lap of the race with an 11-9-8. So, good pace, and that little gap, it shows. Car length and a half, back to Matt Payne. Like somebody's mirror back in the background there, just getting flicked off as well. As Winterbottom tries to put a move on Davison down here at four, and Anton Di Pasquale is also in the queue here in the second of the Shell V-Power racing entries. Heavy congestion in this group of cars at the moment. Meantime, Will Brown's just moved up into position number 19 from the rear of the group. We'll keep an eye on his progress. He's up six spots. He's doing a nice job. In fact, he's in behind Feeney now. Oh, over the road. Big blocking area down there into 11. And it looks like Feeney is trying to capitalise in behind at the same time. Golding, I don't know whether he's seen him or not. He's seen him now because he's parked the Red Bull Camaro right down the inside of the new long Chev. And then on the other side, Will Brown's also then trying to put that move on, which he's done. He's actually made a spot on Feeney in that transaction. How close this is. Oh, 
almost firing into, the, in fact, he is firing into the pit lane. So he's being held up in all of that at the moment. So they're choosing to do something very different there with that car based on where he ended up qualifying and the congestion that he's dealing with. So they're taking the first dose of that compulsory stop requirement and fuel. No further action, by the way, for Thomas Randall. Garth? Just an update on Matt Payne's car. They're asked him to look for some clear air because the oil temperature is higher than what they would like. So we talk about track position and having clear air. It's not just for tyre performance, also for engine performance as well. Yep, thank you. That's always a consideration around these sorts of places, water temperature and oil temperature, especially when you're tucked in behind other cars. Now, we just saw that first stop there, Feeney. We'll give you some numbers, etc. in a little while regarding fuel. Remember, there's a 100-litre fuel drop. Neil took you through that in the Hino Hub earlier as to what the policy and strategy options are and then what you have to do around here and it's always important in terms of understanding how the, the tyre works and what sort of degradation that you have here is how far you detune the car from a qualifying car back to a good race car and nobody knew we didn't do enough laps the track was half wet for most of the practice sessions and we went into full qualifying mode always difficult to understand what you need to do to make the rear tyres live. It's totally different as a race car. You've got to try to make the car much more docile to make them live. And then making the tyre live, often the car doesn't feel very nice because they feel really lethargic. You put more fuel in them. You soften the back of the car off. You turn the car at the corner, it doesn't... It's not as agile, it's not as responsive. So you have to try to get a flow. And one of the things that definitely, from a driver's perspective, across 85 laps of this layout, is that you've got to try to have this rhythm. And if you can get yourself into a rhythm, by the end of it, when you get to those chicanes and you get to the areas that are really important in terms of lap pace, it all ends up feeling a lot easier. And you don't feel like you've got the same level of personal exertion. But in the early laps, it's always hard. It's a rugged racetrack and a rugged racetrack to get a rhythm and momentum on. And no rest. No. The physical aspects of this racetrack are pretty brutal. And we don't know what all that means with these cars. De Pasquale into the lane. Brock Feeney hey. having stopped before, taking a brief gulp of BP fuel. <laughs> Roughly about 13 litres, we think, and a couple of tyres for him. And fellow Gold Coast resident Di Pasquale comes in and takes his first of two stops as well. Battle going on here between Randall and Mostert, and Mostert actually ends up making contact in that process. So as soon as you step offline here, the grip diminishes enormously, and that was sufficient to be able to poke him into the fence. Now, did he carry any ongoing bruise off the back of that will be the question that he's asking, and so will the team be. So interesting, because it's the other way around, remember? So this is obviously the battle for the two cars that have made their early stop. And they were trying. I would have thought that Chill V-Power would have been trying to put an amount of fuel in to give him clean track. But at the moment, as they vibe for track position on the way up, and the etiquette, as you already pointed out, was when whoever's leading at that brake marker has right of way on the left-hand side of the road. And that was Brock Feeney. From the 150-metre board. Brock was so far to the left then that it actually leapt off the deck. It looked like it plucked the front wheels off the road there. It was so bumpy on the inside. Bryce Fullwood's also come in in the middies entry. We'll get a bit of an understanding as to roughly how much fuel went on the shell car there in that last stop as well. So Feeney in, Fullwood in, Deep Pasquale in. Interesting for me then, Neil, in 12 laps, we've Neil. seen Mostert pass Randall and okay, then okay. Randall repass Mostert. So. The normal thing is that if you've got better pace, you get on with it, you round him up and you and you'd press on. It looked like Mostert then ended up in a world of pain and Randall was able to get back by. They've lost contact with Waters and Payne. Waters has got a little gap now, almost one second on Matt Payne. The question for me here is whether or not Mostert's got anything as a carryover after that light contact with the wall when Randall was able to squeak on by again. So they've swapped positions. Buddy's trade power pass replay. We'll have a look at what's gone down here. 
So this is reversing what had happened earlier. So Mostert on the outside there and the dirty part of the road where he's outside the groove has just made contact. So yeah, it's probably not tires. as bad as I thought. He has actually only whacked the tyres there. It doesn't look like it's done any guard damage. Lucky it was the right rear of the car and not the right front of the car, it seems. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Those tyres did a good job, actually. Yeah. yeah. Race control to all teams. Baz Walker is super flag to car 19, exceeding track limits. Matt Payne in position number two at the moment has been given a warning by the race director on the race management channel in the background. He's only 0.68 of a second behind the leader, but he's using well, too much. Car behind car 19. It's just got one of the track limits. Matt Gordon is just limit, so you will be mate, you're all clear. That's Sam Potter in conversation with Cam Waters, the race leader. So Matt's too hungry out there at the moment. Remember in the Hino Hub, I said they do, they being race control, do give the drivers a little bit of credit. But they draw down on that. And if they go too far, they'll get that bad sportsmanship flag. And if it continues, they'll then get a penalty. What's happened in this phase of the race, we just pick up on the... Oh, he had a big understeer then, Kostecki. That didn't look very nice. But what's happened is... Van Gisbergen and Reynolds have played themselves in. They've just done two of their fastest laps on the last lap. So they've made all that gap up. There was a big gap between Mostert, Van Gisbergen and Reynolds. When we get another shot, you'll see that they are right there with those leading Mustangs, Waters, Payne, Randall, Mostert. Now, one of the other things to just bear in mind here, and the... the obviously on a very different sequence to everybody else as we pick up on Will Brown making a move down here into turn one. With both Brock and Anton, Lone Rangers out there on their own, way away from the rest of the field. They've got effectively clear track and they're separated a little bit of a mark by a little bit of a margin at the moment. You see the replay of Will just walking on down the inside on Golding. This is a bit close. I've just pulled up and held my breath for a moment, but no, Will gets out the other side all okay. Uh, they could be beneficiaries further down the road here because they're out of the congestion, which will be part of the race control to all teams. Bad sportsmanship flags to cars 9 and 25 for exceeding track limits. So Will Brown and Scott Pye also being warned for exceeding track limits. We'll keep an eye on this one. So the reason why 88 and 11 are where they are at the moment is there's a gain to be had by running around with relative fresh air around them, particularly where others are battling in the congestion. That won't become apparent, though, until later in the day. And Jack LeBrock takes his first compulsory stop. And this is a trend that we've seen before that you've identified, Mark. So both Reynolds and Van Gisbergen whispering to those tyres early in the race, drawing more from them a little bit later in the process. So Reynolds has gone faster in sector one on this lap than anybody else in the field. And Shane, as always, is showing a little bit of pace further into the run. So there is definitely teams, a change. Flag to car three for exceeding track limits. Gee, th there's a lot of cars. I mean, we've got 70 laps to go. <laughs> and there's a lot of drivers that have already been pinged for exceeding track limits. <laughs> so that basically parks you. It parks you from running over the curb and being ultra aggressive. So the cars that I've listed so far are 9, 25, 19 and 3. So there are a lot of people immediately, Will Brown, Mostert, Payne and Hazelwood all caught. Sounded like a lot over here. It was. <laughs> a lot of fuel going on in the dual entry for Mark Winterbottom. He's having that huge battle before with Will Davison. Marge has just opened up now. It's just fattened up slightly between Cam Waters and Matt Payne. Matt having been warned about track limits. Randall sitting still in third, 1.6 off. Then we've got Mostert, and in fact, Van Gisberg has just grabbed Chaz Mostert up into fourth position. So Shane's now four seconds from the lead. Here is our leader. He's coming up onto the back of Bryce Fullwood, who stopped. So we've got five cars that have stopped thus far. First in was Feeney, then Deep Pasquale, LeBrock, Winterbottom, Fullwood have all stopped. 
And 11.9 is our fastest race lap at the moment, belonging to that man there on screen. There's the margin back to second position. Thomas Randall, despite having a couple of significant lockups, the second of which looked like it was the worst of the two, worst of the two, uh, is actually getting closer to the back of Matt Payne here at the moment. And this is going to impact Cam Waters. So this is the pass Van Gisbergen on Mostert was able to come off the final corner, minimise the wheel spin and the oversteer, and then on the inside for the braking area at turn one, was able to get that done. Oh, a little bump, a little bump there, I think, by the look, but still had enough of a run there to get the overlap. Was able to be able to drag himself down the left-hand side there and be on the inside for the corresponding braking area at the kink at turn one. Shane had nice traction out of the final corner then to be able to position that car shallow on the inside. Control to all teams, bad sportsmanship flag to car eight for exceeding track limits. Andre Heimgartner, RJ Batteries entry for Brad Jones Racing. Andre sitting in ninth at the moment. He's also just been given a slap. I remember the first item in my considerations in the Hino Hub was track limits will be the number one talking point. That's unfolding. It certainly is. We're on lap 18 of 85. <laughs> it's a long day when you can't get caught anymore. We're riding with David Reynolds. We're staring at the back of Chas Mostert's car. And up in the distance there, we've got Van Gisbergen. Wow, there's a lot of congestion here. And this is going to certainly impact Cam Waters. That's going to crush his lead. So these are cars that have stopped that he now finds himself mixed with. This is where we go back to the whole business of having to play the strategy game on your toes. So what do they do now at Tickford? Do they wear this? Do they put up with it? Well, and, and the reason it is, Fulham was all right back. And he put a huge amount of fuel on board. So the Brad Jones middies Camaro, Bryce Forward, he's pressing on, but he made an early stop, put a lot of fuel on board, and he's effectively being lapped. Now, there's a mechanical black flag here for Jack LeBrock, so they've had to bring that car in now for the second time. The first one looked like it was just their strategic stop, and Reynolds is now in as well. We were just looking at him a few moments ago, so they're bringing him into the Penrite entry. Waters has got point four of a second. Control to all teams, bad sportsmanship flag to car 17 for exceeding track limits. Will Davison. Exceeding those track limits, also having now been warned with the bad sportsmanship flag. So this is a conundrum for Cam Waters here. He's parked up in the traffic. Any margin that he earned early on is evaporating. It's having the effect of bringing Payne, Randall and Van Gisbergen together. So that's a headache that they won't want at Tickford. And how do they all play it? And as you observe, you've got younger tyres on the middies entry for forward who does not want to go one lap down. If anything, he's now skipped away. That could actually relieve the problem until his tyres begin to hurt a little. So he'll get a benefit from any fresher tyres on there for a few laps, but it won't necessarily be lasting, Rihanna. Yeah, Jack LeBrock just into the garage. The team was given a message from Supercars officials that the car was leaky fuel. They weren't aware of that, so they're just putting in the garage now and just trying to work out exactly what's going on there. Thank you, Hip3. So that gap... Fortunately for Cam Waters, is now just opened up enough for it not to really impact his race speed. We'll give you some lap times on this lap there. So as you can see from the Century Batteries chopper cam, that shot of Waters, Payne, and in behind Randall, and all their numbers are very close, as you can see those numbers there in the mid to late 12s. And it's three seconds the margin between Shane Van Gisbergen at the moment and Brody Kostecki. Shane's sitting in fourth, Brody's sitting in sixth, and Brody's teammate Will Brown has come up into 12th, and that's aided to a degree by some of those that have been stopping as well. Meantime, Reynolds has gone back out there with some fresher tyres on it, just gone faster in sector one than anybody else in the field, so he's done a 20.8 on this lap and we've still got 65 of 85 laps to run so I, I think that david reynolds policy there is a good one because if a safety car come out he was going to get caught with matt Payne, so he didn't want to double stack and then be able to go out and get clean air for david and then to put a lap together so it looks like straight away his pace is very good 
It looks like he'll do the fastest lap of the race on this one. It brought Will Davison in now in car 17 as well. There's the first four cars, all in the braking area for turn 11. Looks like Mostert has tortured the rear tyres right, on the Optus Mustang. Here. 14 to go. It'll be clear to go on your drop, no one in pit lane, mate. Still waiting. The car that's taken the most amount of fuel so far is forward, roughly 58 litres. And that last lap for David Reynolds was the fastest lap of the race on 11.7. Reynolds is the best placed car that has stopped so yep. far. Yep. He's sitting in 18th position. Still floating around half a second the margin between Waters and Payne at the moment. The gap across the top three is only just a little over one second. There it is. You can spot it. And then just lurking in the background now, Van Gisbergen's playing back into this group. He's 1.8 seconds off the lead. There's a bit of a cushion then back to Mostert and Brody Kostecki. Just want to check that margin again. Van Gisbergen, uh, Van Gisbergen to Kostecki's now four seconds. Brown in. Decent opening stint for him. Yeah, it was good. Off the back of back surgery since back. <laughs> Waiting on fuel. Got a nice clear for the lane. Yep, let's get ready. You're ready to go. Go, go, go. And it didn't look from the quick look that we got of that car in the stop. It didn't look like he had too much damage on that car to get through either. So he's done a nice job to negotiate the field as he forges back through. The Shell car and the Red Bull car that you saw there a moment ago of Feeney and Di Pasquale that I spoke about earlier who came in and sipped some fuel pretty lightly early in the stop but they've been operating out there for quite a number of laps on their own now with a little margin between them as well as we pick up on cam. Three quarters of a second that margin now. The rejoin here will be tight, tight, tight oh. and Will Davison does a nice job of being able to slot in there. He opened up the steering just to try and make some way for the mobile car. Which is very good driving by all of them. Yeah, they all did a good yeah. job of actually untangling themselves from that knot. Totally. So right there is Mostert. And just in behind to the right in a second is going to be Kostecki. And Will's got effectively cold tyres. Yeah. Had all the wheel spin going and it was anything but stable as he departed Rihanna. An issue for Jack Smith and the SCT Logistics car. They had a failing alternator. They've just done a battery change during their pit stop, but they cannot get that car started. Crompona, I had your comments about Feeney's early strategy coming in. I had a look. They took exactly 10 litres, which is nothing, is it, right? So, but the game, because he was so far back, you don't want to go a lap down, right? That's a real, you know, this is the strategy play. So that then means he's going to have to stop and put 90 litres in later in the race. Now, we all know that's a big drink late in the race. You like to take your pain early. And I thought maybe a three-stopper, but then we don't see degradation sufficient for a three-stopper. But what it has done... It's got him out of traffic. He's on the other side of the circuit. There's no risk of a double stack. He's in clean air, just punching out the numbers. And like you said 20 laps ago, mate, you watch at the other end of the race. That's where we see it prevail. Yeah, we're keeping an eye on that one. Thank you, Mark. Scott Pye's in, in the Hino entry here as well. So that's shuffling a whole bunch of people further up the order as they take on chunky amount of fuel in that Good car as well. Park, you know, Mark Larkin, that when you have one of those difficult days qualifying, and it was a tough day for Brock, it's just risk mitigation to try and grab anything back by doing something different. You, if the others are zigging, you need to zag, and that's what they've done down there at Triple Eight Red Bull uh, Apple Racing to just try and come up with something different, and so they will get a yield out of that in some form. Sorry, Crompo, if you're just implying I've had lots of tough days qualifying, yes, you're right. <laughs> no, 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 we all have that. <laughs> He wasn't actually being cruel at all, Marco. He was trying to be factual about the whole policy of fighting back from the back of the grid and trying to do that in a way that limits the risk as you do it. So this is Kostecki trying to get a run here on Mostert. Can he come off this? No, he's too far back to be able to dive. The other thing is the further down the order you are in qualifying, the more adventurous you can be with your strategy. The further up you go, the less likely you are to do things that have got more risk involved in it. it looks like he's got a bit more pace at the moment, Brody Kostecki. He just backs away ever so slightly into the high-speed chicane. 
There's a passing spot up the inside sometimes when all the conditions are just right here at turn 11, but you've got to be well alongside at the point where you turn in because otherwise they all meet the same spot at the apex. Right here on the right-hand side, earlier in the race was where we saw Chaz just give the tyres a rub there, but unfortunately it looked like it was the right rear corner on the replay. We saw Shane make a cool move. A bit earlier here, traction-wise, out of there in second gear. 25 up, mate. 25 up. Get pressure on him. So the logical spot here for Brody, if he gets through the turn one chicane, is to be able to have a crack down here when they get into the turn four braking approach for the hairpin. So this is critical. The hop over the curb and out the other side. That looked like a half manoeuvre there with Randall and Payne, didn't it? As we got the back of that. Now, can he get a good enough run off here? Can he be in that spot where they've got the gentleman's agreement? He is, and he's done it. So that's a big move because pace-wise for Kostecki now, he's got clear air, and he'll be able to park himself in a spot that limits the risk in this next phase of the race. He's now behind his championship protagonist, Shane Van Gisberg. And remember, there's 131 points. Brody leading the championship to Shane in second. And when you consider their respective starting positions, not a bad recovery here for Brody. Here's the replay. Better traction out of the turn four hairpin. He's had a lunge down here. In fact, he started the move in the braking area. Chaz spotted him, and then it just executed on the way out the other side. Now, Randall and Mostert have also come in, so that takes a little bit of the pain away now for Chaz, who looked like he might have used the best the better part of those tyres in the early part of the race. Very good. Yeah, I'll have a fair bet that they'll make a change to the back of Moster's car when this change is done. Ready to go? Ready to go? Go, go, go. Let's see anyone actually yeah. doing that. 10 seconds down. Let's be ready. Okay, shut the door. Okay, be ready for him to drop. Be ready for Maybe him. just a tyre pressure change that the incoming set. You can see the hefty scuff marks down the right rear corner of that car. I, I think we just saw David Reynolds go by Thomas Randall then, didn't we? Yes. Yep. There he is. So that's actually genuinely for position. David was two spots back from Thomas. And with that fastest lap you mentioned earlier of an 11.7, which was being held by Cam Waters on an 11.9. Meantime, the gap, the gap first to second has opened up now to... Well, just as I say it, in comes Cam Waters. Let's go to Larco. Yeah, Crompo, I just thought it's yeah, opportune as Waters comes into pit and out of the lead. If you haven't been watching our telecast, you can jump online and go back and see the real detail. But this parity adjustment we've seen to the Mustangs. You've got Triggered after Bathurst. It's clearly working. What is it around the front here? We've got these scallops here for smoother airflow. Let's drag. And around the back here, the wing is now 50 mil wider on both sides and it's back 25 mil and it's up 25 mil. Go you good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty hard to work out who you're supporting here, Larko. <laughs> so Mark Larkin, passionately a Ford man through and through. This is it. This is for the lead. He's in good shape. And he's departed with just enough margin, but is he going to get away with it through the braking area and out the other side? Yes. But he has to get these tyres up to pressure now. So Waters the lead car in the group that's done the first of two compulsory stops today. From David Reynolds, who's showing great pace at the moment. So Matt Payne is our race leader, and he's got a margin of 0.2 of a second over Van Gisberg. In fact, Van Gisberg has now gone to the lead. So this is a neck-and-neck -neck battle on the run in towards turn one. Nothing in it here. Awkward as they try and figure it out. There's traffic on the inside as well. Shane's got it. So that is for position on track. Oh, a little bump there on Cam Hill from Shane saying, get on with it, mate, because this is really important for me. The other thing that's happened, I just heard over the radio that when we thought before that Mostert had a drama with a rear tyre, just heard that it was a buckled right rear rim. So when he made contact with that fence on the right-hand side, we saw the witness marks on the right-hand rear, but apparently it's buckled that wheel. 
which that would make sense. Heimgartner and Courtney now in as well. In the meantime, Cam Hill that you can see in the foreground of the truck assist entry, Canberra-based driver, he's also got a bad sportsmanship flag for exceeding. So here's how all this started. So I just called Matt leading the race, and then it was on as they came out of the final corner with Van Gisberg and trying to climb up the inside. Here's the replay from Shane's viewpoint. And Kiwi on Kiwi as they get side to side there. Gives him a little rattle. And then this went all the way down to the inside of turn one. And then factored into this was Cam Hill departing the pit lane as well. Not much that Hill can do on the outside down there. So now you've got a 0.8 of a second margin between Van Gisberg and, and Payne. Brody Kostecki's four seconds adrift, and those guys have not stopped. In fact, there are five in the field. Van Gisberg and Payne, Kostecki, Golding, and Declan Fraser, they've not stopped. The first in the queue that has is that driver on screen. He's 38.9 seconds behind, and we know that it's 32 and a half odd seconds through the pit lane, plus their fuel and tyres. Great shot of the cars trying to straighten up before they put their foot on the brake for the first chicane. So the straight has got a right-hand kink in it. Then you've got to get to the braking area, straighten it up, balance the braking, and then turn it hard left into the chicane. Tough piece of road. And here it is. So Reynolds, who had clear track, did the fastest lap of the race has made genuine ground because remember Reynolds was in near Van Gisbergen and in, in roughly sort of fifth and sixth compared to Warners who was leading. Just have a bit of a look at what fuel they got in comparison because we're thinking the Warners roughly 25 litres and looking at car 26 about, about the same roughly might be it might be a lap so the tire life between the two cars is a lot different meaning yep. eight or nine laps but the fuel load disparity not Okay, drop. all but the same but the fresh tyre is going to help the in that process so there's some troubles in the background there for bryce fullwood that you heard Smith and LeBrock are also in that lane. Van Gisberg and Payne, Kostecki, Golding, Fraser, they're rolling on out there at the moment. They're working the 31st of 85 laps is, as now Van Gisbergen comes in and he's shadowed by Payne. So they're locking their fortunes to each other. Now, how much fuel do they each put in? And in fact, Brody runs with them. So the real curiosity here is the first and third car in the queue. That's the championship battle. Matt Payne was very conservative in the braking area in behind Shane on that pit entry. So I would be looking at where this coat car is because you need to get him out in front of him. And that's exactly what he's done. Yeah, so that pit lane, that's a great example of what the team's championship does. You've got to play that card. You've got to think on your feet. Didn't matter what, he, what ended up happening in terms of fuel load, you've got to have clear track. And that's how they played it. Tim Slade uh, steps out of the way down there. So down at the Red Bull Empire Racing Team as Brody runs wide down there with cold tyres at turn four. They have the ability to be able to look down the lane and react to the oncoming coke car. And that's what they did to maintain track position. Golding is the leader. He's the last one uh, to stop, although no, uh, Tim Slade needs to as well. He's down the order slightly. So Cam Waters is effectively going to be the leader of the race once Golding stops. Beautiful shot, isn't it? Oh. Of 85 laps remaining, and Golding is now in, and that leaves Cam Waters back under control with a margin of just a little under one second over David Reynolds, who's made good ground today in this first stint of the race. Everybody having taken the first of their two compulsory stops 
Haven't had a safety car intervention at this page, although the probability is high at this place. Temperatures come up a little bit as well. No shine, a sign of any of those showers that we saw earlier in the day. And uh, margins officially 0.88 waters to Reynolds, and then it's a two second margin to the lead for Randall to Cam Waters, 1.1 seconds exactly between Reynolds and Randall. And then Shane Van Gisbergen sitting in fourth from Brody Kostecki in fifth position. And then we'll have a bit of a look at what they've done from a fuel standpoint as well. So we think that it was about 27 odd litres, 28 litres that went into Brody's car, maybe around 33 odd. We'll verify those uh, into the Shane Van Gisbergen car. So when I look at the pace now, it's interesting looking at the difference in the tyre life between Waters and Reynolds and the numbers in terms of lap pace. So a 12-3 plays a 12-4, there's not much in it. So Reynolds has actually hung in in this phase of the race quite well. So earlier stop, longer life tyres on car 26, still hasn't hurt him very much. And remember, he did the fastest lap of the race very early in his stint. So that hasn't played the normal card of hurting the tyre early and having severe degradation. That's the gap. And given there's nine lap difference in the tyre age, that's a pretty impressive performance by David Reynolds and the Penrite team. And that's the gap also, importantly. So keep a look at that, folks, because there's a three second gap between Van Gisbergen and Kostecki. Teams, a five second time penalty to car three for exceeding track limits. Todd Hazelwood. So that's the first one that we've actually seen cop a penalty for their troubles out there today, although there's a raft of drivers oh. that have been given a warning. Yeah, you've got, you've got, you've got a list. You're keeping a log. <laughs> But that's the first one that's obviously had a double a double warning because that's the policy that Motorsport Australia and our judicial system has evolved at this event. So an early warning, bad sportsmanship warning for Todd Hazelwood, and then obviously a much later one, which has incurred now the five-second penalty. Big slide, big slide, Feeney, big slide. Oh, nicely gathered up. He probably ended up with the air pole sign against the tyres, but have a look at the oversteer. And he was big arm full of opposite lock on. As we pick up on the super slow-mo of the Cool Drive Mustang, just unloading the left-hand Loctite exterior mirror. So that mirror's a bit in the dust. There's Probably about 50 of those so far this weekend. Needed a bit more Loctite. <laughs> it probably did. 0.8 of a second still the gap between Waters and Reynolds here at the moment. Curious to see who's got tyre life and who hasn't and just where they're at in their relative fuel loads at the moment. Pretty solid pace generally and it looked like pretty reasonable degradation for in particular David Reynolds. Yep. If anything, might even be stronger slightly than Cam Waters, but he doesn't have track position. Keeping a very close eye on 97 and 99 here, who stopped later for Van Gisbergen and for Brody Kostecki. And on the dead reckoning numbers, which we haven't verified in their tanks yet, but it looks like it's about a five litre variation in favour of having put more fuel into Shane's car. Jeff LeBrock in the truck assist entry started this race in P13, but unfortunately you find yourself in the garage over and out. Just give us an understanding of what's happening. Yeah, so I literally did half lap before we boxed. I started having a few more moments. First one came in the beach of Kane and he caught me out. And um, yeah, we're, we're blocked all cool. And so I basically had a, a small leak, obviously started to come through and eventually dumped it. And um, like, yeah, eventually it's that day down the end and probably a bit worse for wear now. So I don't know, the boys look into it properly and work out what's going on. But um, yeah, it's unfortunate. It's just uh, not a day. Tough luck. We'll see you back tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you. Bryce Ford in the number 14 midi Chev Kamara has been in the pits twice. First time they popped the bonnet to inspect if there was a water leak in the engine. The second time they came in, they popped the bonnet again and changed radiator caps. One of the pit crew members got his hand in a bucket of water, changing radiator caps. Not easy to do on a hot engine, but they're hoping they've fixed the issue. An unusual problem, isn't it? Here's an onboard view now of James Courtney, who's sitting 10th in the field. Gives you a great view of what it looks like on the run into turn one. 
He had a very lively moment on the lap before with Matt Payne at the front, Kane at the back. They lobbed in there together. It looked like it was going to be ugly. Watch this. So they're all the way up the back straight. So it's through the little kick and then up to there. And then they don't abide by the gentleman's rule. They arrive together, smash themselves over the fence. So at that point there, James on the outside, check this out, and then bang. Then he runs through the center. Matt runs through the center of the next one wow. and pops out. That's as wild as it gets. That doesn't uh, abide by the gentleman's agreement now. Well, it's more than a gentleman's agreement. It's actually in the driver briefing notes. So for the side by side, it's the driver on the left that has right of way. In this case, it's Matt. Matt. But uh, there's no way that either of them were backing out there. Here's our battle for the lead at the moment. In fact, you can see first, second and third all neatly parked in the one shot for us there at the moment. And that's a margin across the three of them of 1.7 seconds. Now they came in earlier, and in particular in the case of Reynolds, a lot earlier than some of the lurkers just at the back end of the top five at the moment. So in on lap 27 for Waters, in on lap 18 for Reynolds, on lap 26 for Randall, as we take a look at the super slow-mo here, and Mark Winterbottom out the other side of the high-speed chicane. Does he or doesn't he? And I think the answer there is it's in the affirmative. He did. Yes. So he makes contact. Isn't that an awesome shot? And then just finishing off that story, so in on lap 31 for both Shane and for Brody. And of all those cars that have just rattled through those top five, it's Van Gisbergen that in theory has taken on just a tiny little bit more fuel than the others. And... What's happening now is they're all trying to get into the right position before the next stops. So Van Gisbergen just did his fastest lap of the race just a couple of laps ago. Randall just did his fastest lap of the race a couple of laps ago. So what they're trying to do is now take advantage of the change of fuel loads and where they're positioned for the next stop. When you look at those numbers, fastest lap for Cam Waters, 11.98. Fastest lap for Reynolds, 11.77. Fastest lap for Randall, 11.86. Fastest lap for Van Gisbergen, 11.83. So there's only really a tenth or a tenth and a half between their ultimate speed, the time that you do it, and what the car feels like to get you there at the phase of the race is the really important one. In fact, on this lap, Cam Waters has done the fastest middle sector of the race. So they're now all trying to get to a zone where you make the final stop with the right track position. High stakes poker out there at the moment. Yep. And that margin first to second is just blocked. It's been solidly 0.8 of a second. Every time I look up at it, it pretty much stays the same. It's just gone slightly under now at 0.76. Check the consistency of Cam Waters. No wonder he's going well. 11.98 is his fastest lap. The last lap was a 12.05. So 0.07 of a second drop off across this phase of the race. Very impressive. Bill Davison here in 18th position from Nick Perkett. He's on the move to Matstone Racing next year. Nick Perkett, second last event for him with Walkinshaw Andretti United. probably be a little kinder this racetrack to tyres now in this second stint as it's begun to rubber up and as people also find a rhythm for what they can and can't get away with it tends to be a little bit more urgent in the opening laps and in that first stint everyone uses more of everything because they're all trying to pass each other now it will have settled down into something more rhythmic 1.1 seconds now gap waters to Reynolds so just opened up fractionally there just a few moments ago while we were chatting about it so I'm just looking, this Waters, Reynolds and Randall battle is intriguing because the fuel time remaining is 33.5, 33.7 and 33.6. There's only at the moment between those three cars, 1.7 seconds between them on track. So they've almost got exactly the same fuel time remaining 
with 1.7 seconds on the circuit. But Shane's four seconds better off, roughly, in fuel. And at the moment, uh, he's 10 seconds away from the lead. Yeah, so he's eight and a half off the back of the battle that we were just explaining. Yeah, so it's the net margin that you need to keep an eye on there. And you know, for using history as your guide, that he's going to look after those tyres at the back end of this ladder stint. Now, they're also investigating what we were looking at there before, and that is that... Uh, Ace is good here, mate. Ace is good. ...wild lunge between James and between that pain up into the high-speed chicane. So they'll have a look at that in the detail data that they get up in race control and the images that they have. So again on that lap, Cam Waters did, on the previous one was a 12.05, just did a 12.09. So he's really put the foot down. He understands that the fuel time they've got between them all is nothing. He understands that the track position is going to be king by the time they get to this next stop. So this front battle between three different competitors Waters, Reynolds and Randall is intriguing. It's going to be a, a cracker based on those numbers in terms of fuel remaining. The next one, and it's now, it was 8.5, it's now 8.2, is Van Gisbergen and... Cass teams, five second time penalty to car 19 for a driving infringement. Failure to comply with the 150 metre turn six procedure. Uh, Rand that's Randall, uh, sorry, that's um, a pain failure to comply as we watched it they've just given him a five second time penalty now i thought that he was alongside him so to me should, when you read out it two, doesn't contravene that to uh, should two or more cars be overlapping at the 150 meter brake mark in turn six, the car ahead has right of way uh -huh. if side by side the driver on the left has right of way so what will happen here there would be a battle about who's in front and who's not so we'll get down to the millimeters and obviously they've got more information at their fingertips uh, up there in race control they've got replay machines and data so that's what the umpires call in this instance five second penalty and the reason that it's done like that is that they're still under full acceleration at the 150. So what it did look like is as they got there that Matt Payne was slightly ahead, but what he probably did was outbreak himself to get in there. Because when we picked that up, it looked like Matt Payne got away with that. But what they'll be saying at Tickford and on board with James Courtney is that under full acceleration at the 150, I was actually slightly ahead. Yeah, Crumper, sorry, Scafi, we've managed to get the vision down in the hub to have a look at it. Now, this is just prior to the 150. You can see Courtney is in front. Now, just watch carefully as we go forward frame by frame. You'll just capture over on the left-hand side. We're looking for the 150 marker. There it is. There's 150. Look, just in front. Yeah. There you go. Good well call. Done. Well done. No, well done, Larko, to find that. There's also a timing line there inserted also. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the look, when we watched it to begin with, clearly looked like Matt Payne was in front, but it was only because he outbraked James to get there, wasn't it? And bear in mind, this is all great. We've got the ability to replay it. When you're in the saddle, you can't see out of the cars clearly, and you're doing 230, 240 foot Ks, and you're fighting to the death. You're not going to give the other bloke, whomever it may be, an even break. So they just have to make a tough call right at that point. That's not a tough call, that looks like fun. Race control to all teams, bad sportsmanship flag to car five for exceeding track limits. So when you're in the driver's seat in both the instances there between Matt and James, there's paid to be the first in the queue and hang on no matter what. They don't want to be the soft guy that rolls out of the throttle and, and makes it all easy. So in the end, try to work out those millimetres when you, you don't have the ability to do anything like a replay. It actually becomes quite difficult as well. So anyway, that's what the umpire has sorted. And there's uh, there's some tools at their fingertips to be able to do that, the timing work up there as well. There's that Midi's car that we spoke about earlier that had the problem with the rat cap and heaving some water out, so hopefully that's all resolved now. Meantime, that margin, first to second, has actually opened up ever so slightly to a couple of seconds. The spread across one to three is 2.4 seconds. Van Gisberg, it's 9.6 off the lead at the moment and seven seconds behind Thomas Randall. And we know that the top three cars 
kind of pretty much the same deal here with the fuel time remaining. And it does make sense that Reynolds is drifting given the age of the tyres on his car relative to Cam Waters. Yes, so the number there is 17 laps on the tyres for Waters, 26 laps for Reynolds, 18 for Randall. So Randall and Waters very similar. Right rear looked like it was a bit slow then on Brock's car. Ben Gisbergen is playing himself in. He's the fastest car on the on the track last lap. Remember, this car needed a very big drink of fuel for this yep. second stop. This was about taking him out of the traffic congestion early, separating it from the 97. Studying that gauge, the sight gauge on the side of the fuel rig. That would feel like an eternity sitting in the driver's seat, making plenty of temperature in that process as well. And away he goes. Forty laps remaining of 85. Still a lot of hot, hard work to come here as we jump on board with Thomas Randall in third position. And he's staring at the rear wing of David Reynolds' car in second. Fastest lap of the race belongs to David with an 11.7. And he might just be drifting a little bit closer to Thomas based on the age of the tyres. So it's an eight lap advantage for Thomas Randall tyre wise here. De Pasquale in, tear off removed. See the timer on the top of the screen there for how long the car's been in the lane. It's triggered by the air spike. Turn four exit for David Reynolds and Thomas Randall. This little battle is beginning to heat up because Randall's car got slightly younger tyres than David Reynolds. They're second and third at the moment. 2.4 seconds off the lead, David Reynolds to Cam Waters. And you can see those margins back to Thomas Randall. Meantime, a further six odd seconds back in fourth position is Shane Van Gisbergen. And it's another five seconds further back to Brody Kostecki, who's recovered well from 10th in the top 10 shootout earlier today. So fifth for Brody, remembering that there's a big battle going on between those two teams and those two drivers, Van Gisbergen, Kostecki, Triple Eight and Red Bull, I beg your pardon, and Erebus. And that, I think, is probably a better scenario at the moment that they may well have thought they could be staring at for Erebus because when he had that tough run in quali, they would have dropped their heads temporarily in there. Brody said we've got a fast car. Let's see what happens when we go racing. But that's at least... If, it, if he is going to end up behind Shane at the chequered flag, he's put a Band-Aid on what could have been a pretty decent problem. Well, minimised the damage massively, didn't he? Yeah. Basically, Ben Gisbergen starting third, Kostecki starting tenth. Seven positions now is effectively one position. So to your point, he's been able to get away with that. So nice strategy, nice driving, no damage on the car. In order to get to that spot, Ben Gisbergen is also playing himself in given those lap times. And I'm looking again, fastest lap last time was Ben Gisbergen. Yep, second fastest car was Cam Waters. Shane's been very consistent for those last handful of laps. More shadows up on the northern end of the racetrack there now as that margin continues to close down between Reynolds and Randall. Here is Van Gisbergen. This car's quick and consistent. And he's in a slightly better fuel position for the second and final stop. But he doesn't have track position. 9.4 seconds away from the lead. Listen how gently he is applying that throttle coming out of there in second gear out of the final corner. Stay with him now, just have a look at what this car is looking and sounding like.
tyres nicely. So last lap for Shane then was a 1 minute 12.1. Last lap for Waters, 12.7. For Reynolds, 12.6. For Randall, 12.4. For Kostecki, though, it was a 12 flat and the best he's done in the race on that last lap while we were with Shane. A couple of things that jumped up there. He's really looking after those tyres in second gear off the tight corners as Randall now really puts the blowtorch on Reynolds. Uh, the other thing is that sun is brutal through turn 13 at the moment when they make the right-hand run into Hill Parade. Right in the driver's eyes there, which makes it tricky to find that outside margin to the wall. Scott Pine, second stop. Dinner. Watch Randall on the right-hand side seconds. of screen, though. So he's threatening now. Right, he's got a tyre advantage. Have Race control to all teams. Bad sportsmanship flags to car 11 and car 26 for exceeding track limits. David Reynolds. That's interesting, isn't it? So bad sportsmanship for him and for Dick Pasquale. So Reynolds is second. Riley's down in 19th position as Thomas gives the game away now. Doesn't want to be held up in that process of trying to find a way around car number 26. Three seconds in rounded terms between Waters and Reynolds now. Van Gisbergen now shuffles up to third because of the Thomas Randall stop. That's clever. Well, the Tickford group there to bring him in. He was only being held up. He needed to get out of all that drama. You see the bad sportsmanship flag there for David Reynolds in 26 and Anthony Di Pasquale in car 11. But that's a pivotal decision in this race for Thomas yep. Randall. Just trying to fix the mirror. Yeah. Trying to fix the mirror. Don't worry about the mirror, mate. We'll get a wipe that off on the end, probably. Good game to drop. Go, 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 go. Stop there for the very last piece of the fuel equation to make sure that he gets that minimum fuel drop done. And uh, Matt Payne, Chas Mostert here in combat. Now that's telling for David Reynolds that radio message that we heard just a few moments ago because that crimps his capacity to get hungry at the back end of the race if he needs to be able to use a little bit more of the track limits. So the shrewd operators have been managing that carefully. They keep them in their back pocket. They don't necessarily know where they are in the depth of all that. But if you get to the last couple of, couple of laps, last two, three, four, five laps, and you haven't heard from the umpire at that point, you go crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a, a big part of the final sprint component to this race. If you've already been pinged for track limits, you can't go all out late. Just, there's a lot of drivers being warned about track limits there now. Now the other car, just looking up and down uh, our column here of who did what in the last lap. So Waters was the ninth quickest on the last lap. Reynolds was the 11th quickest. Van Gisbergen, second fastest car. But the fastest car on the last lap was actually Heingartner. Who's fifth on the track, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So they've often had good race pace, haven't they? Well, it's actually been a frustration for them. He spoke to me about it earlier today. But they still haven't totally figured out how to get the thing to work in qualifying. Chris Brisbane was talking about it in their garage as well, that their ability to be able to stitch together a car that's got nice race pace seems to be as good as anybody else in the field. It was evident at Sandown they didn't quite as, have as much of a decent run at Bathurst, but they're doing it again here at the moment. The problem is they're giving some of their opponents a head start. Browns into the pit lane now for his second drink. Three seconds margin waters over Reynolds. It's a cool shot. So I'm just looking at the numbers and we need to check this out, but I, I think Randall has effectively had a slower stop. Done. And on the numbers there, I might get the guys to check. Might have been more fuel because we said they were going to need 33 seconds of stop time. It's th almost 36. Here we go. Race leaders in. 
as Will Brown, <coughs> excuse me, now departs. This needs to be picture postcard perfect for Tickford. Yeah, give it one, Cordell. Eyes on skill. Eyes on skill here. Still good, Cordell. Halfway there. 32 laps remain. 20 seconds down. 13 BP75's going in at the rate of 2.3 litres per second. Right there. Eyes on skill. Still clear with you, Tom. Still clear. Right there. Three seconds to go. Declan Fraser in the background. Second. 2.3 seconds is the gap between those guys. Final stop done now for Waters. And in comes Reynolds. Those tyres were older, but the fuel strategy was about the same. It's going to be very interesting to see, once this stop is done, as to where Randall is in proximity, because they should have been right together. And Gisberg has been making recent profit with consistency, crushing down that margin. Just looking for where Waters is. Meantime, well, he's coming out of the final corner, Camp. So, meantime, Brody Kostecki's on target for the fastest lap of the race. He's just done two personal bests in the last couple of sectors. Here's Waters. Here we go. What is this going to look like when they meet up down here at the apex of Turn 1? Camp should have the advantage. No, not quite. Not able to get it done. Oh, this is going to be tight down here when they get to the apex at turn four because as Reynolds going to be able to turn it down and can he drive it out the other side with enough authority? Up the inside comes Waters. They almost clash on the other side of it. Side by side, building up to 230, 240 kilometres an hour and Waters gets it done as Heimgartner pits. McVeigh, Alistair McVeigh was in the radio. He was on with David saying, hold him off, hold him off, hold him off. On cold tyres, he couldn't do anything about it. The drive traction for Cam Waters was far superior, but the Thomas Randall slow stop is real. That car's way back from where it should have been. This car, top left of screen, has been very quick just in the last 10 laps or so. The back end of its tyre life has really looked after them. Meantime, Pye out there with refreshed rubber. He's looking speedy at the moment. He could end up with the fastest lap. Brody's got it at the moment on an 11.6. And he's just done a personal best in the mid-sector. It's great combat going on there at the moment between Shane and Brody. This is what we've come to expect as Shane now pits. So they're reacting at the Red Bull Empire Racing Team for a critical stop here for car number 97. Second in the championship at the moment. Watch out for those boys setting up. This is going to be super interesting here. Stop sending on the board, please. His pace in recent laps has put him right into this game. Courtney's in in the background. Brody's our leader. Left hand side of screen is Cam Waters. How close is this going to be? Great battle between Red Bull and Monster, between Tickford and Triple Eight, between Waters and Van Gisbergen. Shane's on the departure. Here comes Cam. Gets by him. It's going to be tight down here. Where's Reynolds? He gets by him as well. That's going to be a wonderful battle to the chequered flag. On all teams, bad sportsmanship flag to car 99 for exceeding track limits. Oh, Brody's also got a bad sportsmanship flag. He's got 28 laps to negotiate from here. He's got no more lives. 
Now he's done that quick lap that I mentioned before. He's been pressing on with it. On this last lap, he's also showing great sector splits, Brody Kostecki. This is going to build up to be a beauty. And who can look after their tyres? Who's in a racy position for the back end of this one? Remember that. So Race Payne's control to all teams. 10 second time penalty to car 56. Second penalty for exceeding track limits. Declan Fraser, who got no laps yesterday at all. Remember that Matt Payne's got that five second penalty hovering over him here as well. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. just after they completed their work. And here comes Brody. From the lead of the race, Brody can stick in. Pain departs. Nice pace at the back end there from Brody. As the shadows lengthen and the track rubbers up, we're seeing more and more pace and people getting decent numbers out of their cars in the back end of this stint. I can't work out what's happened with the Thomas Randall stop. Something's gone on there. Those numbers were supposed to be within a tenth of a second of each other with right, Waters and Reynolds. About 10 seconds to go. This is Mostert. Alright, let's start getting ready. Yep, get ready, get ready. We're all holding our breath here to make sure the Kostecki stop happens the right way. So here come our key runners. They're on the front straight here. There goes Cam. There goes David. Here comes Shane. Brody's on the right. Hazelwood. Randall. Brody in behind. Here comes Heimgartner, who's going to threaten Brody when they get down here. This is going to be line ball when they get down here to turn four at the hairpin. And Heimgartner will get even closer by the time they pop out the other side. The pie was also out of lives as well for track limits I heard on the radio before as we pick up here on Chas Mostert who's down in 12th position, Reed. Crumpo, I was standing in the garage with, when Tom Randall came in for his stop. His engineer, Chris Stuckey, had his arms in the air. I've spoken to him, he said, I don't know what's happened. They can only believe that it was a slow fuel rate going into that car, so it's absolutely not what they expected. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, there was a question mark there as we go on board with him. We're scratching our heads looking at the data that we were seeing in here. Thanks for tidying that up, and I'm sure Chris is pretty frustrated by that. So our leader is actually James Golding, followed by Nick Perkat. The corrected leader here is Cam Waters. We've got a great battle forming up here. We've got 27 laps remaining of 85, race number 25. That's a postcard from heaven. Gorgeous image here. Century Batteries Chopper shows us the state of play out there at the moment. Fine and sunny. Hefty breeze, though, from the southeast at the moment as Golding and Percat come in, and that leaves Cam Waters in command from David Reynolds. The margin is a very tiny little 1.1 seconds with two and a half back to Shane Van Gisbergen. Then Thomas Randall in fourth position. There's our leader. Big opportunity for him to convert now this afternoon to grab 150 points. It's been a bit of a drought, and this will be key to the confidence for that driver and for that group inside the garage if they can stitch this one up this afternoon. What stands in their way is tyre life and consistency and how well he's able to look after those tyres. He's got pressure from Reynolds, and we know that Van Gisbergen has historically, with these cars and the previous generation of cars, has been terrific when it comes to making sure that he's got enough firepower in the last 10 laps of the race. And there he is in the background. So Waters on that lap, lap 60, has just done his fastest lap of the race in 11.91. So good signs for Ford fans with Cam putting to great effect those fresher tyres, even with that extra fuel load on after the stop. Done a nice job. Just in behind there, just saw Thomas Randall. So for sure, when re-reported there, that slow stop really impacted 
his performance. But what you'll find now is Thomas will be angry about that because he would have thought, based on the strategy that we were explaining pre-stop, he should have come out with Reynolds and Waters. Now he's got Shane Van Gisbergen in the way. So this would be a good opportunity for Thomas Randall to put some really good, clean laps together to see if he can forge his way up to car 97. And then Brody Kostecki's the next car. So Brody, as we said before, Neil reported the fastest lap of the race on lap 57 for Brody with an 11.62. And Brody is 10 seconds from the lead. One of the things that's interesting just to contemplate here, because we spoke about it earlier, and Mark Larkham underlined it in his conversation with us, is that uh, Brock Feeney, for example, qualified down in 21st position, and they have tried to do something different there, knowing that when you're that far back in the field, that's a real challenge. So they've got him up into 14th position. Di Pasquale also had a tough qualifying, and he's just in front of him in 13th position at the moment. Not something that you're going to put in the scrapbook and celebrate down the road in your career, but really important to be able to get some points in that process. It's the view looking northbound up towards turn number 11 here with 24 laps of 85 remaining, and we've got a margin of 1.6 seconds, the gap between Waters and Reynolds. And a great game of cat and mouse unfolding here at the moment. Best control to all teams. Bad sportsmanship fade to car 97 for exceeding track limits. Ooh. Shane's out of Shane. lies now as well. So that's Brody and Shane. Got no more wriggle room when it comes to getting hungry over the curbs. In the, your vast list there that you've been tracking, is, <laughs> car six is not in there, is it? No, it's not. No. <laughs> but okay. everybody else is basically. Much. Is Reynolds in there? Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like a toilet roll. There's a lot of numbers scratched down there at the moment. So I'm just looking at those that are in the top group. It doesn't look like, and we may not have caught all of them. Cam's clear. But, yeah, and it looks like Randall's clear yeah, at this point. He is. Yep. So of the top five runners, because uh, Heimgartner's all, he's in yeah. sixth. So of the top five runners at the moment, two of them have still got some moves up their sleeve. So Waters and Randall can be a little bit greedier when it comes to using the curbs if they needed to at the back end of the race. And here's the margin first to second. That's just a little under one and a half seconds at the moment. Mostert did the fastest lap of the race on the previous lap. So it was an 11.62 by Brody. It's now an 11.61 by Mostert. Neil, you're talking about championship points. Let's have a quick revisit. We showed you before the start of the race, 131 points between Kostecki and Van Gisbergen. 150 points for each of the races still coming. And here's the points that are available for the different positions. Now, right now, we said earlier on, he needed 33 points per race, Van Gisbergen did, to catch him. So at the moment, where are they? They're third and they're fifth, and at the moment, that's 18 points. So not 33, but I'll tell you what, it's a damn good start, isn't it? It is. And you, at this end of the championship year, that's why one of the reasons I mentioned that 75% classification when we do the Hino Hub set up at the commencement of the race, because every point, oh, they matter all throughout the championship year. That's how you build a championship win. But, but right now, you do anything and everything you can for every single one of those points, because you do not know what's going to unfold and what will now become the next three races after this one. For sure, and the thing that can't happen is Brody cannot lose a spot here to Heimgartner or Pai. So Heimgartner and Pai just in behind him, so he absolutely cannot lose a spot. And then just up the road, he's just over three seconds behind Thomas Randall. So at the moment, all Brody needs to focus on 100% is getting to Randall to minimise that gap that Mark just explained. Now, pace on the last lap. The fastest car was Chas Mostert. Second fastest car was Matt Payne. Cam Waters, our race leader, was fifth fastest car. Reynolds was the seventh fastest car. Van Gisbergen was the ninth fastest car. So they're kind of all jumping around a bit there at the moment in terms of peak speed. But what is evident in our trend lines that we're looking at here at the moment, Van Gisbergen's only 3.9 seconds off the lead. And there's a compression going on between Waters, Reynolds, Van Gisbergen. 
race control to all teams. Five second time penalty to car 35 for a driving infringement. Failure to comply with the 150 metre turn six procedure. So I had Cam another Hill. radio message come over the top there. I missed who's, what car number that, that was. That was car 35. So Cam Hill has been involved in a similar scenario. That's his second. The, yeah. No, the, that was a driver infringement for the back chicane ah, right at out. the 150 marker. So similar thing that what happened with Matt Payne and James Courtney. Cam Hill's been involved in one of those that we didn't see. I just want to watch very cautiously, with great interest, the lap speed between the top handful of runners and the margins between them. So the last lap, 12-1 for Waters, 11-9 for Reynolds, 12-1 for Van Gisbergen, 12-1 for Randall, 12-1 for Kostecki, and a 12-2 for Heimgartner. Andre, by the way, is about 11 and a half odd seconds off the lead at the moment. Here's our margin, 1-2, and third position. That wind's still pretty heavy duty out there at the moment. It's bringing a lot of salt spray and mist up onto the racetrack. The beach is just metres to the right-hand side of the cars from there. Through the Breaker Street section into Sarissia Street, turns 12 to 13. This is where they were battling sun when we were on board a few laps ago. Hill Parade down to the final left-hand. It brings you back onto the Gold Coast Highway. 1.4 seconds the margin will get some speed checks here between Waters and Reynolds and Van Gisbergen on this lap. Great mid-sector here by Cam Waters on that last lap and he's just done his best lap in 11.7. So he's squeezing now. He's just making sure that the marauders behind him don't get too incentivized. Exactly. Have a look at that fastest lap order in that you just rolled through before. That 11.7 fastest lap of the race for him, but it's also second fastest was Matt Payne, who's race way down in eight. To all teams, five second time penalty to car five for exceeding track limits. James Courtney. Put it on your list. <laughs> I haven't got enough, there's not enough hours left in the day for me to be able to write down the list now. I've got too many other notes going here at the moment as we pick up on Cam Waters, 1.6 seconds that gap. Great last lap for him, under pressure from Reynolds. Trying to find speed and not take too much out of the tyres. Meantime, Van Gisbergen, 4.4 seconds off the lead. 2.8 for him between David Reynolds and Shane. Split across the top six cars. He's just on 12 seconds at the moment. We've got 18 laps remaining. Last time in victory lane for Cam Waters it was right back at the start of the year in the controversial win in Newcastle when Red Bull were disqualified. And that's what they're battling for out there at the moment with that monster Mustang. Trying to get some points on the board, trying to get back into victory lane. Here's a great battle going on between Heimgartner and, uh, and Pi. This is real. Sixth and seventh between these guys. And the back end of that last stint for Heimgartner was really impressive. And he was last lap order. Heimgartner was way down the order. So there might have been a bit of a traffic effect in that. The guy was showing that he was 24th fastest on the last lap. That's so. right, yeah. But the guys behind him are pressing on hard, aren't they? Because Matt Payne was third fastest and Mostert was fastest on that last lap, but nothing in it. Have a look at that. Mostert was faster with 11.9. All the front guys did 12 deads. The second quickest car out there on the last lap was Shane. Waters was fourth, Reynolds was fifth. Oh, trouble down here at turn four, and that involves Cam Hill. And I think James Golding, Golding was the other car, yep. yes. And so they ended up arguing over the same latitude and longitude down there at turn four and car number 88 now also getting the bad sportsmanship flag for exceeding the track limits it's on the manifest <laughs> it's gonna end up every car on there actually we're gonna have Seventeen laps remain of 85. Hot, hard work out there at the moment. They'll be 
beginning to feel the physicality of the mission this afternoon. Cam Waters has got 1.6 seconds in hand. A couple of laps ago, he did the fastest personal lap in the race for him. And this is a replay of what we saw down here at the hairpin at turn four. James Golding, Cam Hill. Cam's got into the side of him, and they both arrived in the same spot at the same time. Peter Zubris is the owner of New Long Racing. Top fuel racer in his own right. Fastest lap of the race belongs to Chaz Mostert. He's sitting in ninth position at the moment. But an intriguing battle going on at the moment. Trading speed between Waters, Reynolds, Van Gisbergen, Randall, Kostecki. Lots of debris building up on the outside of this racetrack. Plenty of mirrors have been drawn off these cars and scattered all over the road. So if there's a collective noun of like herd of cattle, what do you call a bunch of mirrors parked on the side of the road? A mess. Ah, right. Point three seconds now the margin back to Reynolds from Waters. He just squeezed that margin down a little bit then just in this last half lap. This is far from resolved, all of this. Right, even lost it in behind it. He's made ground on them too. Heimgart and Pyatt, Payne and Mostert, these guys six, seven, eight, and nine. Brody doesn't look like he's got massive pace. No, he doesn't, does no. he? And he's got Thomas Randall between he and Shane. He took on more fuel in that last stop. One second is the gap mark between Waters and Reynolds. It's tightening up again. And uh, last lap order for Cam, he was the 14th fastest car out there. So a little slip up somewhere on the line has just let some margin slide for him. So we pick him up back into the beach chicane. He's just up again, isn't there? Those two. No, it's tight with those guys at the moment. The other guy that we haven't spoken a lot about, but coming from the back of the field today, very good job, Will Brown. Yep. He's currently 11. That's a, that's an outstanding performance by Will and the team. Come from 25th at a place like this, that's so hard to pass without having drama. It's very, very well done. Off the back of invasive surgery, so that's also Race control interesting. to all teams, five-second time penalty to car 19 for exceeding oh, track limits. That pain. I'm how, just how frustrating for him. Listening to... I'm just listening. I, I reckon... I reckon there's a, a, a bit of an engine issue with Cam Waters. It sounds like it's running a bit rough. Really? Yeah, I... Just, we're going to try to get to the bottom of this for you. We're, get, we're going to try to get to the bottom of this for you. But it's... It, did, it didn't sound really right. The last lap for him, he was 15th fastest. So something's going on with his pace because his margins disappeared down to 0.8 of a second now. <laughs> Dealing with traffic. So is there a question mark over this car now for whatever reason? I, I just thought it, I heard it sound rough when it come by, but I'm hoping that's not the case given the luck he's had this year so far. The well, middle sector, it was it, very good. Well, not only very yeah. good, it was the best we've seen in the race. So. Down, blue flag. Might be traffic also having affected that, but he's just yeah. done the best middle sector that we've seen. And that lap for him was a 12-1, 12-4 for Reynolds. So his comparative pace is OK. Um, Shane did a 12-2. So for Cam, last lap order for him was fifth. For Reynolds, 13th. For Shane, he was sixth fastest. The fastest car out there continues to be Mostert at the moment, who's down in ninth position. We've got 13 laps remaining. So this battle from Kostecki back to Mostert was really tight. He's just calling for blue flags. So who, which car, is it? That His own copy, team copy. car in front of him? Who's the car in front? Car two. It's uh, Race control Nick to okay. all teams. Ten second time penalty to car three for exceeding track limits. Todd Hazelwood also gets a whack from the umpire. That's a second, that's a second one for him, remember? It's got the ten seconds now. So Percat here is starting to impede Waters, and that's why he's blowing up Deluxe over the radio, Lucker. 
So, Scafi, I just stood out on the pit wall there and hung my ear over the window, sorry, the window over the wall, and all I heard was screaming Ford V8. Sounds beautiful. Water's car, no problem. When I asked Timmy Edwards, he said, no, no, mate, just a little bit of pacing himself. That's where that loss of speed was. Just a little bit strategic looking after the tyres, but gee whiz, he's going to have to be careful with uh, Davey on his ass like this. I don't know if I'll be doing too much confirming. He yeah. was the sixth fastest car on the last lap. Reynolds was the 14th fastest car, and sounds like it's sweet enough in its engine tone. So whatever you picked up in the background there might have been something else also. We've seen a couple of cars here in years past that have busted headers as they crunch over the top of the curbing here. Could also be another car out there that doesn't sound so sweet. 1.4 seconds is the gap between Waters and Reynolds at the moment. Most has just moved up into eighth position. There he is on screen. Well, this is going to be a lively battle here because remember, Pies just up the road. Hot gun is there and so is Kostecki. And Most has been last two or three laps fastest car again on the last lap. So what's important here for Brody is that he gets his head down and he does not lose a spot. That championship race that Blanco explained before, the difference in the points right now is 18. That's based on the positions. The teams, five second time penalty to car 25 for exceeding track limits. Oh, no. um, that's so lost it. Five seconds. He's in eighth position at the moment. He got pinged early. Yep. So he was really early on. So that one now, after that lap pace, that now incurs five seconds. Here's a curiosity. Mostert 8th, Payne 9th, and Courtney 10th. They've all got five seconds. They all shuffle down neatly together. But what's that do to Brown? Well, he's, he's far seven back. seconds behind Courtney at the moment, so the answer, temporarily at least, is nothing. But they'll all just shuffle to the same degree, so they'll all go back five seconds and the timing order at the end of it all. What it does is it takes a little bit of heat out of the pie, Kostecki, Heimgart in the battle there too. Now, what's happened, we, we were throwing doubt around Cam Waters at the moment, but if anything, it's Reynolds that's just lost a bit of pace. It's now 2.4 seconds as we check out the replay here with Chaz down the inside on Matt turn four. So he was 16th fastest on the last lap, and Cam was the sixth fastest car on the last lap. Cool image as they make their run down the front straight on the Gold Coast Highway, heading generally in a southerly direction there in that long right-hand curve. 260 plus kilometres an hour as we pick up on the leader into the braking area. 2.38 seconds with 10 laps remaining now. So does anybody have any firepower? The margin Reynolds and Van Gisbergen is now just 0.3 of a second. So what we're not quite seeing at the moment is just behind this. And there it is there. on the exit of turn four. Van Gisbergen is all over the back of David Reynolds and he's making a big blast with 10 to run. Yeah, wow, well, Crompe, look at this. We're just looking at our gap to leader. This is the pace of the cars versus the leader. Look at Dave. The last five odd laps, he's just dropped away. Remember, we said if Van Gisbergen gets past, he's 18 behind, points behind Kostecki. There's another nine. That's 27. He was aiming for 33 a race on the money. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the part that we really need to, to track. Pressure here, enormous pressure here on David Reynolds now in the back end of this race as Van Gisbergen gets much, much closer to the rear wing. Thank you for the update, Mark Larkham. Traction out of here has been strong for Shane. He gets it up the inside. There's nothing between these cars as he grabs third gear. And he starts to sneak it up with a bit of side draft and great traction side by side and nudges ahead into second position. Reynolds comes back as they make their way down into the braking area here. Shane's tight and shallow. And that compromises the entry ever so slightly, and Reynolds has to give it up out the other side. And that brings Van Gisbergen up into P2, and he's now 2.7 seconds away from uh, from Cam Waters. Okay, back in your rhythm now, mate. Back in your rhythm. So We're three seconds back to Reynolds. Please, please, please. Mate, to go to the end of this one. Alistair McVane on the radio. At that, at 2.7 with nine laps, it's three tenths of a second per lap. But he's looking for now Van Gisbergen to get to Cam Waters. What did Cam do on that last lap? He did a 12.8. So he'll need to put the foot down to ensure that he doesn't get caught up. Look at those numbers. 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. 0.6 on the previous one. So let's make sure for Cam that he doesn't give this one away with nine laps remaining. There's our race leader. 
2.999 seconds is the margin back to Van Gisbergen. There's traffic in between, and it's car number two. It's Nick Perkat in the mobile NTI racing entry that's separating him. Here's the replay from above from the Century Batteries chopper. Nice exit traction there for Van Gisbergen. It just wagged its tail late in the gear change, second to third. And then he gets that little blast by in the midsection of the front straight. And then Reynolds ultimately has to yield here on the awkward side of the road when they get down to the left-hander at turn one. Lights go on now for Flaging. Waters. Yep. He needs every little bit of advantage that he can get from Todd Hazelwood or anybody else in the field if he's going to cling on to the lead of this one. 2.7 seconds is the margin at the moment. The sector splits between them in the first sector was three one hundredths of a second between Waters and Van Gisbergen. So they're in quali mode at the moment. It's maximum attack from two of the biggest and best operators in the business. You'll want to sidestep Hazelwood quickly here. You'll need to give it away. Todd down the straight. Need to give the throttle a breath and let him get across in front of him. And so will Nick need to do the same thing for Van Gisbergen. So Waters comes across the strike. The number is a 12.58. Van Gisbergen a 12.10. Almost half a second gain for Shane on that lap now. 2.4 seconds is the gap. Still some traffic to negotiate here. Hazelwood in the cool drive entry is separating first and second at the moment. Seven laps remain. Hazelwood's been warned that Shane is lurking and he's battling for position number two. The cool drive car is Todd Hazelwood. He's second at the moment, Van Gisbergen. Perkat's out of position. Third at the moment is David Reynolds with Thomas Randall in fourth and Brody Kostecki in fifth position from Andre Heimgartner who's got that penalty hanging over his head once they get to the chicken flag and the final results are declared. On board with Shane, turn 13, the sun's still a problem on the exit there in second gear, third gear, Hill Parade on the run up to the final double left-hander at 14 and 15. Shane. Gentle application in second gear, not to excite those rear tyres, third gear, fourth gear, Fifth gear. Sixth coming up briefly on the run down the front chute. Two seconds officially the margin between Waters and Van Gisbergen and the lap split last time round. 12-5 for Camp and a 12-1 for Van Gisbergen. He peeled four tenths of a second away. Almost exactly the same difference from the previous lap. Hazelwood now parks on the left-hand side. Now it's game on. Van Gisbergen has clear line of sight over the Monster Mustang. Race control to all teams. Bad sportsmanship flagged car six for exceeding track limits. Oh, oh, oh. Cam Waters has spent his penny. He's got no more track limits lives up his sleeve now. But so is 97. And Shane's in exactly the same position. These two at the front of the field have got no more lives when it comes to trying to sneak across those curbs. If they misstep in their application of trying to do qualifying laps at the moment, they are going to get a whack from the umpire. It might be the determinant in this race. Waters is opening up the line on the exit to try and look after those tyres. He's gone faster in the mid sector. Both drivers know they've got no more lines up their sleeves here in this regard. So no more from Sam Potter in the background. What was the lap like that time through for Cam? It's a 12-2. In the middle of the back straight last time. 12 flat for Van Gisbergen, one and three quarter seconds with five remaining. That's a much better lap there by Waters. 12 2 place 12 1. So that's a really indicative number with no interference from the previous lap cars. Perkat and Hazel would have now been cleared. Waters and Van Gisbergen, an absolute fist fight to the end of this one. Five laps remaining. And can Cam Waters hold on after such an unlucky year? He's been working so hard, the team in the background. He's shown glimpses of incredible pace. Their race performances entire life haven't been good enough. But today, it may turn around. One second, I oh, beg your pardon, one-tenth of a second advantage for Van Gisbergen in sector one on the last lap.
but he took a little bit of time out of him waters in the mid sector on this lap we'll get a speed check for them this time as they cross the control line it's a 12-3 for waters a 12 flat for van gisbergen and it's one and a half seconds for waters he's hunting down career victory number 10 for van gisbergen off the back of the bathurst victory it could be victory number 81 Van Gisbergen's off to the USA to NASCAR in 2024. He's got the eyes on for another championship at the back end of this one. Remembering it's a 131-point margin between he and Brody Kostecki. He's already going to take points out of Brody today. But this is all about getting a race victory. Neither of them can hop over those curbs with too much aggression. Last lap order was Van Gisbergen the fastest. Waters was the third fastest car. The second quickest car out there was actually Frosty. Mark Winterbottom. Turn 12. 1.4 seconds. Both of them on the maximum. On the absolute grip edge of these tyres. Four laps remaining. About to be three laps remaining. Three by three. Nine yeah. kilometres on the Gold Coast before we see a chequered flag. Is it going to be Waters? Is it going to be Van Gisbergen? Is it going to be a Mustang? Or is it going to be a Camaro? Nothing in this battle at the moment. 12-4 for Waters. 11-9 for Van Gisbergen, who cracks the whip when it matters most. The margin's now one second as the Kiwi hunts Waters down. It's that last sector. It's that piece of drive traction out of all those 90-degree corners that really gives Van Gisbergen the yield. The way it comes onto the straight minimises that wheel spin and that's where the gap was in the previous sectors there was nothing in it so in all this piece here there's nothing in it the brains trust the stress the emotion between those two camps jamie wink up there looking on board as he watches his charger the big kiwi van gisbergen playing against cam waters who's mighty fast in the middle sector. He is. So he just did a 23.8 on that last lap waters versus a 24.1 for Van Gisbergen. But right here is where Shane has got a dart. Exactly. This thing puts its power to the road beautifully out of that final corner. And that might serve him well as he sets it up into the first chicane and down into that hairpin left-hander. Now we've got two laps remaining. Six kilometres separates us from the chequered flag. Waters has got this thing inside at the moment. 0.8 of a second is the margin. It will be a full-blown fight to the end. And Waters is not going to yield this thing without either winning or bidding. He is not going to let him buy easily. Great traction again out of turn four for Van Gisbergen. Absolutely nothing in it between these guys at the moment. Two tenths of a second is the gain for Van Gisbergen in sector one. This is where Waters has been supreme in the last few laps, and he wags the tail slightly on the exit. But Gisbergen wiped the right-hand mirror off the thing coming out of turn four, so there is no margin. These guys are they're qualifying laps, and have a look there. That mirror is gone. He just wiped it off coming out of the hairpin. This is where Van Gisbergen's got to gain these little 90 degree sections where the car puts his power down so well. Right here is where he has it. Here's the car come off there, Neil. It's straighter. Well worth the price of admission oh, on the God. Gold Coast. We have got three kilometres of racing to go, and the margin is 0.3 of a second. One third of a second separates Cam Waters from Van Gisbergen. There's nothing in it through the first chicane. Waters, we know, might be vulnerable off turn four. Van Gisbergen opens up the corner. Waters covers just temporarily to try and make sure that he doesn't get eaten under brakes. But there's nothing in it on the run up to the fast chicane. He's got to make that Mustang wider if he's going to hang on here. He closes the margin, closes the margin, closes the margin on Van Gisbergen. He throws the thing through the chicane. He's doing That's everything it. he can. Is he going to be able to survive the last corner for Waters? It's supercar race number 248 for Van Gisbergen. It's supercar race number 508. They're both drawing on every last millimetre of experience to get them to the chequered flag. The Camaro wags its tail out of turn 13. Waters might be able to hang on, but it's going to be very, very close. He's got unbelievable traction, Van Gisbergen. What's it like out the other side? What an outstanding supercar race and I think the Cam Waters has ticked the box. Waters is the winner at Surface Paradise in an epic supercar race. Yeah boy. Great job mate. Great job.
If there was one section of road in Cam Waters' life, he did the most superb job for well, that beach chicane get... because he opened the gap up to get away with that win. Sincere congratulations to Cam Waters and everybody at Ford and Tickford for what was a tremendous bounce back. What a run by that team. Wow. They come up into the beach chicane, line astern within half a car length of each other, and they come off the chicane with about four car lengths of gap, and it was absolutely maximum commitment. Very pleased. I think I got cut off before. Fucking awesome job, Fastest middle well sector of the race on the last lap. Very pleased for Tim Edwards. Very pleased for Sam Potter. Very pleased for everybody in that garage. Cam Waters is the winner of race number 25. He got home by the massive margin of 0.19 of a second in one and three quarter hours of supercar racing on the Gold Coast. 250 kilometres and in the end resolved by just millimetres. What an outstanding race. 150 points in the bag here for Cam Waters. That helps his cause. He's down in ninth position in the championship and this is going to give him a boost. Larko? Yeah, I want to grab a quick word. Hey, Timmy. Tim Edwards, mate, well done. First of all, let me shake your hand. Tell me you've ever worked harder and longer oh for God. a race win like that. What a great race. Yeah, what, what a year. And holy shit, the team have worked so hard this year. And, yeah, Cam drove the wheels off that thing there. And, yeah, we're very tight on fuel. But, you know, you got to roll the dice. So. It was a good one, mate. It was car performance. It was driver performance. It was team and strategy performance. It was a whole package. Yeah. I don't know. I can't talk. I haven't been like this for a long time. <laughs> holy shit. What a win. Fantastic. Good on you, mate. It's beyond happy, Tim. It's speechless, Tim. <laughs> exactly. Don't bid it now. It looks like it's going to fire into the fence then. Wow. What a great performance, huh? One for the board fans this afternoon. And inside the garage at Tickford, they're loving every second of this. That's Sam Potter, the victorious engineer this afternoon. He's put all the numbers together to make sure that that car is the best it can be for Cam Waters. The strategy worked. You heard Tim say in the background that they were tight for fuel. And very shortly, he'll be down there in Pertec Victory Lane uh, to lap up a big one. And lots of conversations with Cam during this year. There have been times where it's been very frustrating, very depressing. And a lot of pent-up anger as they try to figure out how to get the most out of those cars get him into a competitive position and he stitched together a beautiful victory today to be the man sitting right alongside that <laughs> uh, that Pertec victory lane position down there, position number one. <laughs> Do you reckon they're happy about it? <laughs> Great to see. And it an amazing drive by Shane this afternoon as well to put on such a show. I was watching those times in the last 20 odd laps, watching that margin close down, making an unbelievable race of it at the back end. And a special word for David Reynolds and Penwright Racing today as well to get on the podium. And not a bad recovery for Thomas Randall given that that looked like they had a tricky stop there to come home in fourth position. <laughs> Some redemption for Brody Kostecki, who qualified in 10th after a slip-up in the top 10 shootout. Gets him home in 5th. The grins from ear to ear for everybody down there at uh, Monster Energy Racing and Tickford. And uh, none happier than Cam Waters this afternoon. He'll be feeling no pain at all. And nice to see Shane come up there and congratulate him. So well done to all those boys. In fact, everybody out there this afternoon has put on a great show for us and very, very entertaining. So 0.19 of a second. Cam Waters over Shane Van Gisberg and David Reynolds gets us on the podium as well. So we've got Mustang in position one and position three. Shane Van Gisbergen in position number two and I am really looking forward to hearing from Cam. He's with Jess. Well, he's right back where he wants to be in the Pertec victory lane. Cameron Waters, congratulations. That was an epic drive. You have really ridden the roller coaster this year. The team rushed down here. There's a lot of emotion right now. Just tell us what this one means. Uh, 
unbelievable. It's been such a shocking year, to be honest. And um, it's so good to finally get the win, or a win this year, a proper one. And um, the emotion on my team's face it says it all. So, so happy. Shane was coming for me, but there was no way I was going to let a bloody GM beat me again. Talk us through those closing laps, and as you could see him getting closer and closer in your rear vision mirror, what was going through your mind? Um, I had a bit of fuel saving to do and a bit of tyre saving, and I um, had a few curb hops up my sleeve, so I just uh, made sure I was set for the last kind of five laps and um, gave it everything and got to my rear bar, but yeah, he's never going to pass me. Ripper start, perfect execution today, but that middle sector was where you were really able to dominate. Yeah, the car was really good through the chicanes. Um, still probably need a little bit more power down, but, yeah, cars are a lot better. So, um, yeah, it's really nice to drive. I bet you that redemption tastes sweet. Tell us what you've learned about resilience this year and how sweet this moment is on the back of that. Yeah, just don't give up and, and keep chipping away. You know, we've got an amazing fan base and some amazing sponsors and amazing team behind me, and we don't give up. We keep fighting, and, and that's what we've done all year. And, um, you know, I feel like there's a bit of pee getting closer now. Um, don't want to say the word, but it's, um, you know, just awesome to be on the podium and, and on the top step. Great to see you back here, Cam. Go and soak up that podium. We will do. Thanks. It was a hell of a fight. Maximum attack from Shane Van Gisbergen at the end of the race. Hey, Shane, congratulations. That was a real thriller. Just talk to us. What it was like from your seat over those closing laps? Yeah, it was pretty good. I lost a little bit at the start and then trying to claw it back. But um, it was interesting. The cars are very different, I guess. The way they move your speed is a nice way to put it. But congrats to Cam and his team. Awesome job. Awesome win by them. And uh, Dave as well. We had a really good battle. So lots of fun. And hopefully we can back it up tomorrow. You're winding down your time in supercars for now this year. How are you enjoying just being in the moment, enjoying this crowd and this great event? Yeah, like this this is an awesome event, but obviously on to bigger or better different things next year, I should say. But um, yeah, just excited for the future. I want to finish off the year strong, get some good results, and then got some exciting things happening in the future. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. He's managed to pull back some points in the championship, so that's going to be a big talking point this afternoon. But Davey Reynolds has worked to, had to work hard yeah. to make it here on the podium. Congratulations. You really put your best foot forward on the Gold Coast. Tell me what it is you love about racing at this circuit, because this is a big result for the team today. Yeah, it's a massive result. Um, congratulations to Cam. That's an awesome result for him. Uh, yeah, I just... I worked really hard, like that middle stint set it up for me, and the last stint I had a bit of a drama in my car, and uh, I just couldn't get the most out of it, so uh, it was going really well to then. I was going, I was about a second behind Waters, his crew's going, something's, something's about to go wrong, because this is happening too easy, and then sure enough, two laps later, something did go wrong for me, so, but that's okay, uh, I think we've got a fast car, we just need to qualify a bit better tomorrow, and um, yeah, we'll tune up for the race and have a, try and have a win. What was the issue? Uh, my brake bias cable got jammed, so, you know... During the stint, the rear tyre wears out and the fuel load comes off, so, uh, you know, you start to reel lock a bit, which destroys your tyres and makes it really hard to drive. So I, the last, like, 15 laps were terrible for me, but um, up until then, it was it was perfect. Talk to us about the rejoin with Cam after that second pit stop. Didn't quite just have enough on cold tyres to hold him off? No, he didn't. I didn't know exactly where I was. I didn't have a mirror, so I was, like, didn't know where I was in space and time, and I looked beside me out of turn four, and I was like, oh, damn, I'm done anyway, but... Uh, it was it was fine. We would have fought hard towards the end, but um, wasn't wasn't be, wasn't to be today. You know, we'll come back better tomorrow. My boy's done a fantastic job over the, over the week, and um, yeah, I'm really happy and really happy for Matt in the shootout. That was a, you know, made me go, I'm old or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, fifth podium here on the Gold Coast. You're an absolute master. Can't wait to see what you've got for us on the podium. Probably nothing. I only do something cool when I win, remember? Like, you know, second's cool, third's second loser. So, you know, it's all about waters and winning today. That was awesome. Congratulations, Davey. No worries. Thanks, Jess. Cheers. Brody Kostecki, still championship leader. Hey, started 10th, got to 5th. How was your day? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, car felt pretty good off the start and uh, was able to, uh, to sort of pick up a few uh, spots off the start there and, and um, really got going on the middle stint there and um, was looking forward to trucking home and it just didn't really come alive last stint. So not really sure what happened, if um, something moved in the car or whatnot, but um, yeah, it was pretty ugly towards the end there. So I knew a few guys had a few five-second penalties behind me, so I just tried to minimise some risk and I knew I wasn't going to be able to catch um, Tom there and just... Um, just want to congratulate uh, everyone from Tickford and Cam uh, on uh, winning a race. That's uh, pretty cool. Now, at the start of the race, starting 10th, how much does the championship play on your mind, sort of being in the mid-pack and just making sure you get out the other side? Yeah, well, I think a few guys thought maybe I was just going to give them the right away. Um, but, 
yeah, you sort of can't, can't really do that in this game. I don't want to get involved with someone else's crash, like, like you've always told me, Jacko. So, um, yeah, I was able to just get a you know, really good start. Got, got the whole shot off the line on a few of them. And I'm not sure who was to my outside, but, um, yeah, I was on the kerb. And I think they ended up in the tyre wall or something. So, um, it's just racing at the end of the day. And uh, we've got to be a bit better tomorrow. And I've uh, got to not curb strike tomorrow if I make it the shootout. You talked about the middle stint of the strong being very uh, middle stint of the race being very strong for you. What do you do now to analyse that last stint? How you can improve it for tomorrow's race? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, the only thing we did was put fuel and tyres on it um, for the last stint. So um, yeah, we'll go back and look at the data, and um, it'll show us um, you know what we could do better, and um, hopefully replicate what we did that middle stint there, which was really fast. And then qualifying tomorrow, you touched on the curb strike. That was an issue in the shootout, but qualifying, you still got a fast car. How can you then make sure you don't do that sort of stuff tomorrow with the curb strikes? Uh, watch more data, uh, sorry, we'll watch more vision studies and more data and um, yeah, maybe not go um, f full on into there and just bring it back a little bit. <laughs> 250 k's, how'd you pull up after the race? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, might, might have a bit of an ice bath and, and uh, some dinner and probably head back to the hotel and have a good night's sleep. And the cars are straight, so positive for the team. You've got the team's championship to think about. Does that play on your mind as long as well as the driver's championship? Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to do the best job I can. And, um, you know, like I said in the past, the race will take care of itself. So um, I think Shane got second in that race. So 